Example six. Just one more bad example, I promise. Well, at least this one is, is one more bad example. So it says, a photographer is taking a picture of a four-foot painting hung in an art gallery. So this is four foot. It says the camera lens is one foot below the lower edge. So here's the camera lens, and that's one foot below the lower edge. Okay. It says, as shown in the following figure, it said, how far should the camera be from the painting? So that's this distance here, which they're calling X. To maximize the angle subtended by the camera lens. So what they're saying is to maximize this angle right here, beta, which is the angle that covers the actual um, picture itself. So they're looking to maximize. They're saying, what's the distance you should choose x to maximize beta? OK. So let's look at this right here. So what they do is they look at the full angle, which is the angle from the bottom to the top. And the reason they look at that full angle is because they need to create a right triangle so we can use some of our relationships, our trig relationships that we have. So what they did is they looked at the full angle theta. And then they look at the, which gives us a big triangle, right triangle, right? And then they're going to use the smaller triangle right here and call that angle alpha, which also gives us another right triangle. And so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract these pictures for you so you can see them. Here's the small triangle right here. The small triangle has a 1 here because it's 1 foot below it. This is x. And this angle right here, they're calling alpha. And then the big triangle is right here. And with the big triangle, they're calling this angle theta. And this has to be 4 plus 1, so that has to be the 5. And this is the x, OK? So that's what they're coming up with right there with that picture, just looking at those pictures. We can come up with relationships. For instance, if we want, we want think about alpha here. We have the opposite and we have the adjacent. So what I would think of is using tangent of alpha. But if I did tangent, that's opposite over adjacent. So I'd actually have x in the denominator. So how can I get x in the numerator? Well, I could do adjacent over opposite. And that would be cotangent. So I do know that cotangent of alpha is the adjacent over the opposite, which would be x over 1, or in this case, just x, right? And I also know that cotangent of theta would be x over 5, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So what does that tell me? That tells me that if you take the arc cotangent of theta, or sorry, the arc cotangent of alpha, take the arc cotangent of both sides is what I'm doing. Take the arc cotangent of both sides. If I take the arc cotangent, the inverse cotangent of both sides, I would have that alpha equals the arc cotangent, arc cotangent of x. And if I do the same thing here, if I take the arc cotangent of both sides, I would have that inverse functions. I would have that theta equals the arc cotangent of x over 5. And what do I want to do? I want to maximize beta. Well, think about what is beta. Well, beta is the big angle. The big angle is theta minus the small angle, which is alpha. So this is theta minus alpha. But if you look, what we've done is we've already solved for alpha, and we've already solved for theta. So what is beta? Beta is equal to, oops, sorry. Let me get back to black and zoom in here. Beta is equal to arc cotangent of x. Uh, sorry, it should be theta minus alpha. So that should be arc cotangent of x over 5 should be the first one minus arc cotangent of x. That would be theta minus alpha. Again, I want to maximize this. So I'm going to find the derivative with respect to x. So I need to find beta prime. What's the derivative of arc cotangent? Well, it's negative 1 over 1 plus, well, it's x over 5 quantity squared. But then we need to remember chain rule multiply times the derivative of x over 5, which is just 1 fifth, right? minus the derivative of the arc cotangent is negative. So I'm going to make this a plus 1 over 1 plus 
x squared times the derivative of x, which is just 1. So what I'm getting here is a, uh, what would I have? Well, I'd have a, a negative 1 fifth all over 1 plus x squared over 25, I suppose, plus 1 over 1 plus x squared. Um, I, I guess that's what I have right there. So what do I do at that point in time? Uh, let's multiply everything in the first term by how about 25 to get a common denominator. And when I do that, I would have 25 times negative 1 fifth would be negative 5 all over 25 plus, well, those would simplify, and I'd end up with an x squared. And then on this one, I have plus 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay. So what do I need to do now? Uh, get a common denominator between the two. So I'm going to multiply the first one by 1 over 1 plus x squared. Uh, I can't just do that. I have to multiply it by, sorry, 1 plus x squared over x, 1 plus x squared. And the second one I have to multiply by 25 plus x squared all over 25 plus x squared. Whew, getting a common denominator. So here I have that beta prime is equal to, well, it would be negative 5 minus 5x squared. In the second one, I'd have plus 25 plus x squared. And all of this would be over 1 plus x squared times 25 plus x squared. Let's work on simplifying that. I'm going to have to jump up to the top to save some room. So up top, I'd have beta prime equals, well, I have a negative 5x squared plus an x squared, so I'm ending up with a negative 4x squared. And then I have a minus 5 plus 25, so I'm ending up with plus a 20. And all of this is over 1 plus x squared times 25 plus x squared. OK, so this is my derivative. I need to find my critical values. Critical values occur, well, I have to look at when's the derivative equal to 0. That would be when the numerator, which is negative 4x squared plus 20 equals 0. Subtract 20 from both sides, I'd end up with negative 4x squared equals negative 20. Divide both sides by negative 4, and I'd end up with x squared equals positive 5. Take the square root, I would have plus or minus, but I don't need to worry about a positive and a negative because the negative makes no sense in this case. So x here would be the square root of 5. I need to look at when is the derivative undefined. Well, that would be when the denominator equals 0. So that would be 1 plus x squared times 25 plus x squared equals 0. So that would be 1 plus x squared equals 0, or x squared equals negative 1, which can't happen. 25 plus x squared equals 0. One sec, let me scoot over, equals 0 which would be x squared equals negative 25. Again, a negative number can't happen. So the only critical value that I need to consider is the value of x equals the square root of 5. So I have options here. I can either use the first derivative test, or I could use the second derivative test to determine my answer here. And in reality, there's no chance that I'm going to find that second derivative. It'd be a quotient rule with a product rule and just a mess. So I'm going to use, to prove it's a uh, max here, I'm going to use the first derivative test. So I'm going to look at my line here. Here's the square root of 5. I know I can stop at 0. Um, OK. So what do I have to do? I have to do, choose a test point to the left of it. And I'm plugging this into the um, derivative b prime. And the version that I'm going to plug it into the derivative is negative 4x squared plus 20 all over 1 plus x squared times 25 plus x squared. I'm going to choose some numbers. How about the numbers 1 and the number 10? And let's see what happens. Negative 4 plus 20 is positive over, well, the bottom is a square plus a square, so that has to be positive. So that would be a positive. The first interval is positive. Let's try 10. 10 squared times negative 4 plus 20 would be a negative over, and again, the bottom has to be positive always because it's squares and pluses. So this would be negative. So indeed, I do go from increasing to decreasing. So the first derivative test tells us it's a max when x equals the square root of 5.
Okay, that is exactly what we wanted to know. Reread it. It said how far should the camera be placed from the painting to maximize the ang angle subtended by the camera lens. So, what should we do? We should put it square root of five. Well, let's let's go ahead and approximate that because you would never tell someone square root of five feet. You would say approximately the square root of five is approximately what two point two four. 2.24 feet. So you should put that camera, that base, that camera lens, approximately 2.24 feet away from the wall. And then if they ask what the angle is, we can plug that into the x value in to determine the angle and determine exactly what the angle is. Okay. All right. Let's do one last question. And what I realize is. The way that I typed this, it didn't work. Um, so that's on me. I didn't, I didn't convert it properly. So what it should be is your, your demand function for your product is lowercase p equals 56e to the negative 0.00012x. We've seen this problem before, where p is the price per unit in dollars and x is the number of units. What price will yield the maximum revenue? And it says, hint. Revenue is given by x r equals x times p. So we need to find the revenue equation. The revenue would be x times p, which is x times 56 e to the negative 0.00012x. So there should be one, two, three, four zeros. One, two, three, four zeros. I'm just looking, counting my numbers of zeros. Looks like I'm off by one zero. So let me go back and change that. That was a negative 0 .00. Just make sure I have four zeros. You gotta be really, really precise on this to stay the same as the book. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. Negative point zero zero four zeros. One, two, x. And there's an x in there. Okay. So everything's in terms of x. We're good there, but we need to find the derivative of this. So the way I'm going to look at this is the product rule. So it's going to be the first, which is going to be 56x times the derivative of the second. Well, that's e to the negative point one two three four zeros one two x. But then remember, you need to multiply that times the derivative of the exponent, which is negative point zero 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 one two. That's the derivative of that times x plus the second which is e to the negative point zero 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 one two x times the derivative of the first, which is simply 56. Okay. So what do we have here? Let's see what we can factor out. We can certainly factor out a 56. And we can also factor out uh, e to the negative. So I'm going to put this over e to the point zero 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 one two x. And then let's see what we'd have on top. If I factored out that 56, I'd still have an x, or sorry, a negative 0.000012x in that first term. And then I'd just have a plus one. Okay. So we gotta look at when is this derivative equal to zero and when is it undefined. So it's gonna be equal to zero when the numerator equals zero. So that's 56 times negative 0.000012x plus 1 equals 0. Multiply both, or divide both sides by 56. I'd have negative 0.000012x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 from both sides and I'd have negative 0.000012x equals negative 1. Divide both sides by negative 0.000012x, or sorry, 1, 2, and I'd end up with x equals, well, I'm going to do it in my calculator, negative 1 divided by negative 0 0.1234 a 1 and a 2, and I'm getting x equals 83,333.33, always repeating. Okay? So that is the number of units. X here is the number of units. And again, I have not, oh, sorry, I still need to consider when is this undefined? Well, this is undefined when e to the point 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 
But our exponential function, if you remember what exponential functions look like, this is above the x-axis. This never happens. It's never equal to zero, so this is never undefined. So what do we need to do at this point in time? We need to prove that this is a maximum. And how do we prove that it's a maximum? Well, we have a choice. We can use the first derivative test, or we could use the second derivative test. Well, I'm not in the mood for finding any more derivatives here. I've already done the work to find the first derivative. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the first derivative test. So what do I need? I need to consider the amount of units, and I need to plug it into the first derivative. The first derivative being 56 times e to the negative 0.0001 2x plus 1 all over e to the sorry 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 that would be 56 times negative point zero 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 one two x plus 1 all over e to the point zero 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 one two x of course I'm going to use my calculator for this I need some values I need to the left of 83,300 so 0 would be my lowest 83,333.33 units on forever is my critical value. So I'm going to test how about 1 and how about 100,000. How about 1 and how about 100,000. Again, all I care about is are they positive or negatives. So go ahead and plug these numbers in. If I plug in a 1, I'm getting a positive value. And if I plug in a negative, or sorry, 100,000, I'm getting a negative value. So that means my function is increasing to decreasing. And when I go from increasing to decreasing, the first derivative test tells me this must be a maximum. So I've proven using the first derivative test that it goes from increasing to decreasing. It's a critical value. It must be a maximum. So the answer is x equals 83,333, right? And the answer is no, because you have to read the problem. Be very, very careful on this problem. They did not want to know what's the quantity to maximize revenue. They wanted to know what's the price to maximize revenue. So if we want to find the price to maximize revenue, we have to plug it back into the price equation which is 56 e to the negative 0.000012x. The x value that we're plugging in is the 83,333 and 33 cents, okay? So go ahead and plug that in and let's see what you're getting. I'm getting a price of approximately $20.60. Uh, so when I get that, what price should they charge per unit to maximize the revenue? They should charge approximately $20.60. Look, these numbers are horrible. I get it. But this is real life numbers. Real life numbers are horrible. Again, the problems that I choose on the test are not going to be near as bad as numbers. Um, in all honesty, this one wasn't too bad other than it was a decimal. But the derivative wasn't too bad. Um, proving that it was a maximum was just two test points. So in the grand scheme of thing, compared to the other problems, I didn't think this problem was too, too bad for you, okay? Um, I wish you the best of luck with the homework in this section. Again, what we're looking for is always set up the equation that you want to maximize or minimize. Make sure it's in terms of one variable. Find its derivative. Find its critical value. Prove that it's a maximum or a minimum through the first derivative or second derivative test. And then interpret the final answer. I hope that helps.